Hello everybody and welcome to another Android TV Box video review by the MXQ Project. In today's video we are going to be looking at the H96 Max. It's a Rockchip 3328 TV Box running Android 7 Nougat. It's got 4GB of RAM and 32GB of storage. So without further ado let's take a closer look at this thing and see what it can do. So this is the H96 Max H1 itself. Now you may be wondering what H1 means, it's just basically one of many different versions of this same box, with the same processors, and there's a few different versions. But this is the H1, it's got this kind of colourful design that they've opted for. It's not my favourite design, I think it looks a bit silly myself, but that's up for you to decide. Anyway, it feels quite cheap, the build quality feels like it's not very, very good, it's not up to scratch maybe, it feels very light and flimsy. Anyway, let's take a look at the connectivity. On the back here you've got kind of the standard inputs and outputs, you've got a couple of AV inputs there, HDMI out port, you've got the power port and things like that and yeah pretty standard stuff Ethernet port and there's a USB port on there as well that's USB 2.0. On the other side here we've got three more USB ports one of which is a USB 3.0 port and that is pretty much it there's not much to this box I'm not going to do a proper unboxing because you've seen it all before you get a plug you get a crappy user manual and you get HDMI lead and a little remote control all that kind of stuff but anyway let's move on and take a look at the firmware of this box. So this is the setup screen, it's kind of an updated version of those old Mbox setup wizards. So when you first turn this on, you can set your language and things like that. You can come over here and select your Wi-Fi settings and all this stuff. So yeah, pretty standard, just go through this, set up your internet connection and all that. You can set your screen resolution and zoom and all that kind of stuff. And there we go, if we just click finish, it will say, okay, now please use it. Not really sure what that's about, I was going to use it anyway, I wasn't going to leave it on here. But yep, yeah, let's move on. So this is the main TV launcher, you'll have seen this a fair few times before, pretty standard launcher nowadays, it's not my favourite but it's not the worst either, it runs very quick, it's quite smooth. If we go into the settings here, we'll take a look at the Android version, and we can see that it's running Android 7.1.2 Nougat, so all as it says it's going to be. So if we come up here to software update, there's not actually an update on this box, on this firmware, so unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to be getting any over the air updates, it's just the standard Google update app here, so we're not going to be receiving any updates for the firmware for the time being at least there may be other options later on but no nothing over the air so here's the apps that come pre-installed with this box on this firmware and it's kind of a few bits of bloatware here we've got Cody and stuff like that we've got Showbox and Modbro and all that kind of stuff something called Cloud TV not sure what that is you also get a cleanup app as well so you can kill all your processes and all that stuff and keep the box running smoothly while you're on the menus and the launcher but yeah pretty standard um, bloatware for a Chinese TV box here. Just bringing up the DRM info here and it has absolutely zero support for DRM protection, no Google Widevine support or anything like that, so you're not going to be able to get HD Netflix and things, which is very unfortunate. It's, we've kind of come to expect a at least a little bit of DRM protection on these boxes, but there's absolutely no compatibility here with the H96 Max I'm afraid to say. So just bringing up the Antutu benchmark score, it scored around 34,000 as you can see here. So not actually too bad, not as uh, bad as I was expecting it to be. But we'll test that a bit later on when we try some gaming. I'm a bit dubious because when we launched and went through the actual benchmark test when it came to the 3D part, one of the scenes wouldn't play. That's the marooned scene that normally plays first. The second scene did play, but it was very, very choppy. So we're going to kind of see how we got on with proper gaming in a little while. So I'm just running a quick speed test now with the speed test app from Ookla and I'm connected to Ethernet at the moment rather than Wi-Fi as I'm near the router and it's absolutely fine. I'm getting about 94 megabytes I think this is going to uh, finish at which is great. I've got 100 meg connection so yeah Ethernet absolutely fine. You're going to get a really really decent connection speed on this box. So this is the YouTube app that comes pre-installed, it's actually the Google TV version of YouTube, so you'd find this version on smart TVs and games consoles, and it looks a whole lot nicer than the, the standard Android YouTube app. So, yep, yeah, it's not without its foibles though, it looks very nice and it runs very smoothly, but there's some issues with the search bar, it's quite a common bug on TV boxes where it wants to access the microphone as soon as you hit that search button, and it wants to do a voice search by default, I'm not sure how to sort that out, but if you just kind of deny access to the microphone it'll allow you to eventually type what you want to search for. Also mouse support isn't very good on this, I'm using an air mouse and I've had to turn off the mouse controls because it doesn't play very nice with the YouTube TV app. And if we load up a video now, now if we just load up one of our latest videos and just have a quick look at that, you can see YouTube playback is absolutely fine and it's also playing in 1080p HD as well. So yeah, all very nice, not many complaints with the YouTube app apart from those couple of bugs that I've just mentioned. 
So we installed Asphalt 8 as we usually do to kind of show you guys what the gaming performance is going to be like if we've got any Android gamers watching because I know some of you are into that sort of thing. But unfortunately it's not going to launch. We had problems installing this as well where the box kept shutting down for some reason. We're not sure if that's a hardware fault or a firmware fault. But yeah, this game isn't loading at all and this isn't the only one that it's done this with. I tried a couple of other games such as Modern Combat and another driving one and another kind of shooter game and none of them would launch. So unfortunately it's a big thumbs down for gaming on this device. We're not entirely sure why that is but unfortunately yep if you're going to be using this device for gaming or you're wanting a device for gaming then um, I would probably give this one a miss and last but not least we're going to look at Kodi running on this it comes with Kodi pre-installed and what makes this interesting is that rather than include Kodi 17.6 Krypton, they've decided to include an alpha build of Kodi 18 layer. So why they've opted to use a test build of layer rather than using a stable build of Krypton is anyone's guess. And as you can see here as well, not only have they included the test build, the alpha build of Kodi layer, but they've also filled it with really old outdated add-ons as well. They've got Exodus and One Channel on here, for example, and Bob as well. Completely outdated add-ons, not sure why they've included those. But if we go into the system settings here, you can see that it's all running fine anyway. It's running okay regardless, just not sure why they've decided to include really, really old add-ons on a really, really early build of the latest Kodi. Not entirely sure what that's about, but yeah, this is Kodi running on the H96 Max. So that about brings us to the end of this video review today. Just a very quick one, unfortunately, just to kind of overview this box. And yeah, it doesn't look like this box is up to code at all, really. It's kind of one of those generic cheapo boxes that you can get from China. It's probably all right for use with Kodi and things, but anything else, it's probably a bit of a non-starter and we wouldn't recommend that you used it. Obviously, gaming wouldn't start at all. Couldn't get any games running on there at all. Um, which is strange considering the Antutu 3D score and things like that, but when the games won't even launch, there's something definitely up there. Whether that's on a hardware level or a firmware level, it's yet to be seen. But at the moment, we couldn't possibly in good faith recommend this box if you want it for gaming. But if you just wanted something for online video like YouTube and Kodi, and then yet yeah, you're probably going to be alright with it. It's quite cheap and cost effective and it'll work quite well with that. Again, not sure why they've used the uh, Kodi 18 test alpha builds rather than use a stable build and why they filled it with those outdated add-ons is anybody's guess but once you clean that up maybe get yourself a stable version of Kodi it's going to run absolutely fine but if you're wanting it for things like Netflix unfortunately again it's going to be a bit of a non-starter it didn't have any DRM protection at all it just wasn't compatible with it it didn't even have Widevine level 3 which is the bare minimum for these TV boxes usually but it was completely unsupported altogether so I'm not sure what's going on there so yeah at the end of the day, just a very cheap, generic box from China. Um, it's got decent enough specs, but unfortunately it's wasted on a box like this. 4GB of RAM and 32GB of storage are not going to get you in very far with a box like this. So that's all we can really say on it. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this quick video review by the MXQ Project today. If you liked it, give me a like and leave me a comment in the description. Let me know what you liked about it. Or if you've got any suggestions for how we can improve future videos or any ideas for future videos, let us know in the comments. Come and see us on the website, mxqproject.com. Also, follow us on Twitter at MXQ Project. The Twitter handle will be on the screen right now. And do not forget to hit that subscribe button. And it really does help our channel grow. And yeah, so we shall be uh, seeing you very soon with some more content. I've been Scott. You have been watching the MXQ Project.